This is our last video in our block. And we're gonna talk about a variety of topics. We're gonna talk about things like insurance. We're gonna talk about things like compensation. Hospital safety. And things like public health. And we'll be all done with this block. We'll start with insurance first. There are different types of insurance. There's HMO or healthcare maintenance organization. HMO insurance, you are given insurance and then you're limited to a doctor's dad take that insurance. So I'll write limited to, to insurance provider. So if you have Kaiser HMO insurance, then you can only see Kaiser uh, physicians. And you see your PCP, and if you need a referral, that PCP will refer you to whatever. So if you, if you need to see a gastroenterologist, you see your PCP first, and that PCP will refer you to a gastroenterologist. Another type of insurance is PPO, probably the more common one, Preferred Provider Organization. Here, you are given a network of physicians a network of physicians. And the good thing about this is, if a specialist is in this network, you can see them directly. No referral needed. So if you need to see a gastroenterologist and you look in your network and there's a gastroenterologist that you wanna see, just go to them directly. No referral needed. Now there are some government health insurance programs like Medicare, I think E as in the elderly. This is a program for people over 65. Also for people that have a disability. Okay. And there are four parts to Medicare. A, B, C, and D. A is for hospital insurance, aka inpatient. So if something happens and they need to go to the hospital, they're covered. B is for outpatient. Basically like clinic and stuff like that. D is for prescription medication. You might be saying, what the heck is C? C is basically A and B, but for a private group that's been approved by Medicare. All right, so C is A plus B in a private setting. Everybody gets A. Uh, just in emergency cases, you know, if you, something happens in an emergency case, you rush to the hospital, you're covered. But you have to opt in for B and D. So all right, everybody gets A. Everybody gets A, but you have to opt in for the rest of them. That's Medicare, Medicaid is for people in lower socioeconomical classes, so poor folks and immigrants or permanent residents. It is a joint state and federal program. So the state has some say in it. You might have heard the news about a state that doesn't want to expand Medicaid, don't want to, don't want to put more money into Medicaid. They can do that. They have a little bit of rights when it comes to Medicaid. Okay. That's insurance. Let's talk about compensation. Physician compensation. There are many ways physicians get paid. There's fee for service, and that is exactly what it sounds like. You get money depending on what service you provide. Now we're gonna talk about what kind of pitfalls for all these different types of compensation. The pitfall for this is that some physicians might overtreat, might give extra services or extra treatment that might not be necessary, but they get paid for it, so they wanna overtreat. Overtreat is pitfall. Yeah, something to watch out for. Another way we can get compensated is capitation. There's a cap. There's a fixed amount of money per patient. Fixed amount of money per patient. Regardless of how much time you spend with the patient, regardless of what test, so all right, regardless of any tests, time, etc. What do you think would be the pitfall for this? People will want healthy patients. I mean, if you're getting paid the same amount for 
a patient. You don't want someone that's going to be really complex. You're taking a lot of time. You're spending a lot of energy, and you're giving them a lot of uh, imaging and services and all this stuff. If you're going to be paid the same, just pick some healthy patients. Uh, just pick people that come in for a 20 minute checkup. You send them on their way. See you later, right? So that's a pitfall that some physicians may have when they get paid via capitation. And there's salary. Salary. Or people are paid a fixed annual amount no matter what. That's a salary. That's what a salary means. What's the pitfall for that? If you're paid a fixed amount no matter what, you might not be as productive. You're saying, you know what, if I see 20 patients, I'm get paid as much as if I see 30 patients a day. So pitfall, decrease productivity. And that's kind of across the board, even outside of physicians. Okay. Let's talk about hospital safety. Let's talk about hospital safety. There's a big emphasis on this, on the boards, because hospital errors kill, I think, millions a year within like the top five killers of Americans. So you gotta know uh, about hospital errors and hospital safety. What hospitals wanna do is set up this safe environment. We call that safe culture, where people are comfortable telling uh, administrators, I think there's something unsafe going on here. I, I'm comfortable bringing up safety concerns because we have this nice, safe culture. That's one way they can reduce errors. Another way they can reduce errors is something called human Factor design. You make systems that reduce human errors, human factors. All right. There's something called force, forcing function, where you basically prevent an undesirable action. So maybe a certain Maybe you make a rule that a certain provider can't prescribe narcotics or can't prescribe this drug. You're forcing that, that system, that action, and that can prevent some errors. You can also simplify things. The biggest example was simplifying things from moving from paper charts to electronic charts, right? That way you don't, that way you have all your stuff in one electronic chart. You don't have to worry about uh, bad handwriting, things that are open to interpretation, all that stuff. It's all on the electronic chart. We simplified it. You can have something called standardizing an action. These are things like checklists and guidelines. So if you need to prescribe a narcotic, you have to go through all these checklists and all these guidelines. And that way you kind of reduce errors. If everyone goes to that checklist, then you kind of reduce those errors. Now, how do we come up with these things. How do we decide that maybe electronic records are better than normal records? We did something called a PDSA cycle. This is a cycle. This is kind of the steps we did to kind of decide, okay, this is a better thing to implement than our previous system. The first one, P stands for plan, where you identify a problem and you identify a possible solution. But the problem with paper charts, hard to read, takes a bunch of space, hard to recover. Solution, make electronic charts. So D stands for do. You test it, you implement it. S stands for study. Study the results. And if it is promising, then we act on it. We integrate it. So we just study the results that, you know what, this is better than paper charts, let's do electronic charts. That's a PDSA cycle. Now, our study part of it, how do we actually study it? We often do what we call a run control chart. You don't really need to know too much about this, but you may have seen it kind of on the hospital walls where they have all these little run control charts. So they'll have an average line and then have little points that kind of go all about. And they kind of look at all these measurements and we'll decide whether it's working or not. And some things it measures is outcome, some things they measure are outcome. I don't know what's going on with my grammar. <laughs> Saying all sorts of stuff. Outcome, which is impact on the patient. I swear I'm literate. Outcome is impact on the patient. Process, which is what you're trying to do. The process you're trying to implement. So what you're trying to do. What you're doing. 
and then balance everything in the hospital everything in the hospital is linked to each other yeah you can't change one thing without changing the other everything has a balance so you might do something and it inadvertently affects something else all right so we have to kind of look for that we kind of look for inadvertent changes inadvertent changes that's balance you have to keep that balance that seems like a lot of information let me try and give an example let's say you do a study to improve ER wait times, right? You're trying to make a better system. You're trying to improve ER wait times. So outcome is the impact on the patient. So outcome would be things like time spent in ER. Right? That's the actual thing that the patient experiences. Process would be what you're trying to implement, what you're trying to do what you're doing so maybe it's reducing time to registration or reducing time to room the patient and then balance everything is linked to each other right so you want to see if if we do this will it inadvertently affect something else so you might look at things like finances does it inadvertently affect our finances? Does it inadvertently affect patient satisfaction? All these different things that might be affected. Might be affected. All right. All these things are done to reduce error. And there are different types of error. There's uh, active error. Active error. Here's when the error is done by a frontline provider maybe the nurse actually taking care of the patient or the doctor actually taking care of the patient or the PT actually taking care of the patient so frontline immediate impact that's not good so uh, nurse gives the wrong drug doctor orders the wrong drug frontline provider causes immediate impact there's something called a latent error latent means hidden right so this isn't the frontline provider maybe it's someone further back maybe it's someone else but it can still affect care it's kind of like a uh, error waiting to happen an error waiting to happen maybe the drug manufacturer accidentally put the wrong expiration date all right it's an error waiting to happen so all right error waiting to happen it's latent it's latent error right waiting to happen Now these are kind of rare. In fact, errors in general are kind of rare because our hospital systems are so advanced now with all these checks and balances. For something wrong to happen, the stars really have to align. Sometimes we call it a Swiss cheese model. Swiss cheese model. Because uh, a slice of Swiss, Swiss cheese has a hole in it. And if you want to poke a hole through two slices of Swiss cheese, you have to align the holes. And so you have to make sure all the holes are aligned if you want to go through the whole thing. That's a dumb way of saying if all the stars are aligned then something wrong can happen. But that's what they like to use. So they like to use a Swiss cheese model, right? So basically a whole bunch of things have to happen for things to go wrong. We like to try and identify these problems and one of them we can do prospectively where the error hasn't happened. Sorry, right. error hasn't happened. But we're looking at our systems, thinking of all the different outcomes and saying, okay, what might possibly happen? Look at possible outcomes and say, okay, what, what might possibly happen? How can we event that? We call this failure mode and effect. Right. What happens if something fails and what would be its effect? We're looking forward in the future. Now there's something called retrospective identification where some error happened, oh no. How can we identify what the problem was and how can we prevent that from happening in the future? So retrospective, an error has occurred. You're trying to identify the problem and prevent it from happening. We do this through root cause analysis. So what you do is you look at all the records, look at all the people that were involved, talk to them, look at all the different systems, look at all the different factors. Again, we have a lot of factors going in anytime there's a hospital. So you look at all the different factors and oftentimes we plot it on a fish bone diagram. What the heck is a fish bone diagram? 
We said there's a lot of different factors, so this factor might be uh, the PT. This factor might be the medication. This factor might be the nurse. This factor might be communication. And all these factors come together when the stars align and make the air. Looks kind of like a fishbone, doesn't it? That's a fishbone diagram. That is hospital safety. Let's talk lastly about public health. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of care. We want to prevent things and stop them from progressing further. And that way we can really reduce the, the strain and the amount of money we spend on health care. We do that through public health. So we'll talk about prevention. First thing we can do, primary prevention, is to prevent the disease. These are things like vaccines. Save billions of people over the course of the history of vaccines. But let's say you were a little bit late. The patient already has the disease. Do you just stop and say, oh, well, it's all, all gone for you? No, you can still do some, some stuff. We do secondary prevention. And this is basically, basically you screen early and you treat asymptomatic disease. This would be like a pap smear. You might find on the pap smear that some cells have gone un undergone dysplasia. They might be asymptomatic. Treat them early, treat them fast, they don't progress. You're still doing something for patients that have the disease and you're preventing them from worsening. But if we didn't catch them on this stage, are we gonna abandon them? No, we're just gonna move on to tertiary disease prevention. Reduce complications. Reduce complications. All right, so we didn't catch it, and they have, we'll say, cervical cancer. We can try and reduce complications from that, try and treat it while we can. If we can't and it's progressed to end stage, do we just abandon them? No, we just move on to our next stage. Prevent unnecessary treatment or harmful intervention. This is kind of our talk on ethics. Do no harm, do what's best for the patient. If they're late stage, stage four, doesn't mean we abandon them. We try and make sure they're as comfortable as possible. Don't do anything that's unnecessary. Don't do anything that's harmful. And that's our last stage. That is it for biostats, ethics. Talked a little bit about healthcare. Thanks for a great blog. See you next time.